Hi, I'm DJ Ware, and this is the Cyber Gizmo. Today, I'm going to be doing the most detailed and complete Linux-focused review that I think I've done on a mini PC in 2025. I'm going to be looking at the Minix. This is the Neo Z97. It's a new machine that's based on the Intel N97 chip. For this review, I am performing a deep dive on Linux uh, and uh, its benchmark performance. Maybe look at some security things and some real-world uh, service uh, suitability tests. So let's talk a little bit about the hardware overview first. Uh, the Minix Neo Z97 ships with an Intel uh, N97 processor that is a four core Alder Lake E core only. Uh, it also comes with 12 gigabyte of LPDDR5 RAM. It's actually L uh, LPDDR5X RAM that is soldered to the motherboard and it runs at 4,000 megatransfers per second. It does include uh, two full size. NVMe slots uh, or M.2 slots and the first one comes with a 512 gigabyte uh, M.2 that is a 2280 board uh, that is running PCIe 3.0 uh, with four lanes. The second slot is is a uh, M.2 PCIe 3 single lane. It also has a dual Realtek 1 gigabit per second uh, Ethernet LAN ports. And of course, there are two of them, and those are both RJ45. It also has uh, uh, the capability for triple displays because it comes with two HDMI 2.0 ports and one display port uh, that is a 1.4 version. All of those can display up to 4K at 60 hertz. So it comes with three USB-A ports. These are Gen 3.2-1 uh, ports, and those provide uh, uh, 5 gigabits per second. There's no USB-C and no SD card slot on these boards. Uh, the package also ships with a Visa mount, there's an HDMI cable and a power brick that offers uh, 12 volts, volts at 3 amps uh, to power the device. So this is the unit right here. Let me see. Yeah, let's. So yeah, this is the unit right here. And as you can see, it's 85 millimeters. It's about 3.4 inches wide and uh, deep. It's also 36 millimeters high or about. I think that's about one inch, one point something inches, 1.4 inches maybe. And then uh, you'll, you'll notice that on this side, you'll see three HDMI ports and then a Kensington lock right there. On the back, there are two LAN ports. There's a audio port here and then your DC uh, power port here. On this side, are the, the two HDMI ports on either end and then the DP or the display port in the middle. And then on the front, all you have is the power switch down here. On the bottom is a cooling fan that really does a good job. It, uh, let me talk a little bit about Windows 11 Pro installation. It failed on me during uh, the pre-setup phase where it's going through and it's identifying what updates to apply. It got about 6% of the way in and just failed. I restarted it, attempted it again, it failed again. I looked in the BIOS uh, and, and looking for anything that might be, you know, possibly causing that. I know that there are some issues with Windows, particularly with one of the builds right now, Windows 11, that is failing uh, with the uh, storage uh, when you're trying to push high amounts of volume. But uh, yeah, it, it could very well be that that's the problem. I, I told Minix about it, they're aware of it. So what am I gonna test today? I'm gonna be actually testing with Cache OS today, uh, mainly because I was just kind of in, uh, 
you know, curious about how it worked. But the only issues that I had with Cache OS is, I, is with the media. I, I'm not sure that the signature for Secure Boot is actually working with the particular version, which would have been 08 uh, something 2025. So I think it's 08 24 or 26. Uh, I'll check that before we leave today. But yeah, it was the latest, it's the latest version of Cache OS and it, it just wouldn't install until I turned Secure Boot off. Overall, I think compatibility for Arch-based uh, systems and at least with Pop! OS is good. Uh, and so, I, I, yeah, there's no problems with those. Uh, as far as network stability is concerned, this unit uses, like I said, a Realtek 1 gigabit Ethernet net card, uh, which provides two ports. Now, it is <laughs> there are well-known uh, issues under Linux uh, with Realtek drivers. Uh, sometimes you will see network stuttering. Uh, however, I found a couple of workarounds that might help. First... Uh, if you go in and disable IPv6 through the sys control, uh, yeah, you, the, you'll avert the problem altogether. So, with these adjustments, uh, the stability improved, and I saw higher bandwidth and benchmark ranges than otherwise possible. The other problem that I had was in trying to set uh, the actual package for the CPU governor to performance mode. But if you have KDE and you're on Cache OS, you can go in directly and set the governor in the settings. So, and that does work uh, 100% of the time with no problems. Benchmarks that I ran on this was I ran Geekbench 6. I got a single core of 1103 and a multi-core score of 3305. That's not bad. I also uh, conducted a security audit using Linus, which is a set of tests that just looks at your configuration. So always consider that one kind of a, a first step. So this at least gives you a basic set of rules for hardening. Anyway, it, I got a, a score of 65, which is pretty typical with, with, uh, with Arch. Again, it's not the fault of the system. It's, this is Arch. Anything under 70, I consider a failure, uh, but it just means you have to spend a little bit more time. Now, you can easily get this up to the 90s, 97s, maybe even 100% if you take the time to do it. One of the key issues that I have been surfacing lately, and I probably should do a video on this, is that I've been running uh, Gripe, that's G-R-Y-P-E, which is a utility that will look through the current CVE NVD database and downloads a, uh, a copy of the signatures that are in there. And then it will look through all of the packages you have installed to determine what your level of, of vulnerability might be. If you're going to run this on something like Debian, though, just keep in mind that you're going to get a lot of false positives with Debian. Debian uses backports, and they keep the same version number. So you're going to get hits all the time on with CVEs because of the version number will be the first thing it matches on. This is based on public CVEs like the National Vulnerability Database, which is provided by MITRE. Uh, it's... The NVD is actually maintained by NIST, but the contractor that's responsible for it is MITRE. In my in my findings, and this is with uh, this is with Cache OS, I got 12 critical uh, CVEs, 111 high, 3,500 medium low vulnerabilities, and then a handful of unknown. That they hadn't been classified yet. Uh, so these are new, probably new CBEs with a CBE scan and see if it's actually published, if, if it's actually tr true or is it a false positive. 
Let's talk a little bit about some real-world application testing that I did with this. So first was FileGator plus Apache. I tested this as a simple personal file server using Apache. Uh, I prefer to use Apache over Nginx simply because Nginx has a high CVE count. And it, it frequently takes more CVEs than Apache does, although the, the race runs a little bit like this, you know, so it depends on what what's the uh, phase of the moon in this particular month as to which one is ahead. But, yeah, so, I mean, I just prefer Apache. There's a number of mitigations that you can use inside of the Apache module library that will help. They're not, again, there's nothing that's foolproof. It's just some things that will help. Uh, so I was successful with the FileGator uh, it, it provides fast local file access. Uh, and FileGator, by the way, is a mechanism by which you can publish files and then share them with others over your network. Uh, it is SSL capable. It does have uh, built-in connections to uh, Let's Encrypt. So, yeah, it can do all of that for you. Do not expose FileGator to, directly to the Internet without hardening. Yes. Uh, Jellyfin installed and streamed test content successfully. I was just doing 1080p, 60 frame a second playback. As, uh, no, flame, no frame drops, no problems with it. Uh, it was local only uh, across the, a trusted LAN. So, yep. That seemed to work fine. So what comes in the box with this? So what comes in the box is the unit itself, a visa mount plate, so you can mount it on the back of your monitor if you want. Uh, it comes with an HDMI cable, the power adapter and cable, and also a printed manual. There's no bloatware or hidden port uh, partitions that I saw on the SSD. What is my, what's my final thoughts for the Minix Neo Z97? I think it offers excellent Linux compatibility, uh, excluding Debian 13. With 12 gig of, of LPDDR5X RAM and a 512 gigabyte SSD, especially the full size ones, uh, the ones that, um, that are in like this form factor here, like this one. I'm not picking on, on the, this is a inland. This is an inland device. The problem with these is, as you can see, they're pretty small and they don't really have a large surface area to dissipate heat. Whereas your longer ones, they do. <laughs> so, yeah, and so that helps a little bit. And it offers all four lanes of PCIe 3. So it, it, it did perform on the file test pretty well. As as well as expected, let's put it that way, for a an, an, a a, a OEM uh, device. The first comment I have is that the fan is silent even under heavy load. You can hear it, but just barely. Uh, it's a it's a it has great support from Minix. Uh, they're responsive and very honest about what they have found. They're willing to help, which is really nice. Uh, it has, this device has a low thermal footprint, which is good. Uh, it's compact and you have Visa, it's Visa mountable. It works well with Arch and, uh, and the Ubuntu based distros like Pop! OS that I tested. There's a, a, there's a, you can hook up up to three monitors, but I didn't test it. I don't. All in all, I think it's a very good unit. I I, uh, I did run into some issues with it. I ran into a lot of issues with Debian, but as, again, it's not the fault of the machine. You could easily just throw this in a backpack with the with your you know you, you know with with your uh, power supply and a and maybe an Ethernet cable, or use it as a Wi-Fi device if you're on the road. But it it works just fine. Uh, I have not tested this with the Tails uh, release candidate for version 7. I did start doing some testing with Tails. It should work on Tails, uh, but I haven't tested it yet. So watch for a, a future, uh, future one on this. 
that's all I had for today. Hope you enjoyed this video on the Minix Neo Z97. Hope to see you again soon, and bye for now.